Tom Elmore from North Carolina, outside of Asheville, in uh, the big town of Leicester. Okay. I'm Robert Jones from Snowfield, North Carolina. I'm outside of Goldsboro. Welcome. Okay. That's everybody, right? I think so. I think some people have called in multiple times or something because we've got more people listed, but I don't know if they're all there. We've got Alchemy plant, Farms and Plants as well, who's, um, I think it's Marguerite who's listening in. I can't hear her at the moment, but she may be able to hear us. So. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the tomatoes, uh, I would like to talk about a, a few things, uh, a few of the pests that are major pests that we need to watch out for. Uh, one of the pests that can cause major devastation um, is the tomato hornworm. Uh, is there anybody who has had it with the tomato hornworm so far? Yes. Hello? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. That's a major problem because, you know, they are leaf eaters and they basically strip the plant uh, almost bare. Uh, if you are growing on a very small scale, we have some pieces of advice that may not be useful for people who grow on a large scale. Uh, one of the things we advise, if it's a very small scale, uh, backyard type garden, we say, okay, just take a bucket of soapy water. Uh, if you are not averse to picking them up, you pick them up, put them in a bucket of soapy water, but of course, and then you dispose of it. If you are on a large scale, that is a major problem because it, it, it doesn't look like something that is doable. Now, there are a, a, a number of methods we use. Now, when you are scouting your field, one of the things that you have to particular note of when it comes to the tomato cornworm is that because they are, the color is green and they are on the plant, you, you can't really see it well. And I've also noted that when they see people walking through the field, they, they just sit still and you may not be able to uh, detect them. But you can tell from the damage and you have to look closely because they are green uh, uh, in order to see them. Now, when you see a tomato hornworm, that has some whitish material covering it. Um, it's a shame that I'm having this difficulty. Uh, I would have clicked on the link and shared my um, 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 pictures that I have that show you have some whitish material on them, which is a, a, a parasite, let's say a parasitoid. Now, anytime you see a worm that has all those material, whitish material on them, this is an enemy that has just been converted into an ally. What happens is that that worm is now serving as an incubator for the very insect that is helping to control the pest. So even though uh, on a small scale we say pick them up, put them in a bucket of soapy water if you are that small, if you see an individual like that, you are supposed to leave it. It is advisable to leave it alone because if you leave it alone, that is just one enemy that ha is now sort of uh, helping to breed your defenders and then they become an ally. Now for all of these leaf eating worms, the smaller they are or the younger they are and smaller, all these products that we recommend, pesticide, uh, organic pesticides that we recommend against them, all of them are more effective when they are smaller. So whether you are going by the BT, Spinosad, and uh, any of these products, just remember that if you wait until these are too big, then you will not have the desired effects that you want for um, um, uh, for the from the pesticide. So those are some of the things you you have to watch out for. Major leaf eaters. You also have thrips. Uh, and, how do you, I would like to know how you are currently monitoring for your pet. Uh, apart from walking through the uh, fields and doing the visual sampling, uh, uh, how are you monitoring for flying insects like uh, thrips and other things? I would like to know how you are currently monitoring for them. Hello? 
Yeah, does anyone Hello? want to share how, does anyone on the call want to share how they're monitoring for tomato hornworms or what they're doing about it? We uh, look for damage and it's uh, pretty distinctive uh, with hornworm. Mm -hmm. We, what, do, what? we do the same. Yes. What about the thrips? What about the what? Uh, what about thrips? How, how do oh, you thrips. monitor your okay. middle for well, thrips? Thrips. Okay. We we don't have much trouble with thrips in uh, Western North Carolina, but um, occasionally we do in the greenhouse. Okay. And so look look for damage. Yes, yes. When you see the damage, that 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 that, that is very um, um, that is one way. For a number of the pests that we deal with, sometimes they are a little cryptic, uh, or the, you don't usually see them. The person who is causing the problem is you always insist on seeing them before you know they've been there. It's going to be late in addressing them. So yes, you're right. Most of the time, we are looking at the distinctive damage they do in order to go after them. Uh, but uh, we have to watch out for the thresholds. For some of these hornworms, you see them and you, they start doing damage. We have a very low threshold for them. Uh, even if you are controlling for thrifts and stuff using some of the pesticides that we have, uh, the, the, the advice is that most of the time you spray maybe late in the afternoon, late in the evening, you want some of the pesticides exposure to high heat and light, sort of uh, that is not the most effective. Also, you want to be sure to avoid the uh, pollinators. Uh, which are most active during the afternoon, and so that is why we normally there are, there is more than one reason why we are asking for the spraying to be done later. You are trying to avoid pollinators. Um, or for trees, another way them sometimes is to use, uh, we have this yellow scars. Um, you put them out there in the field. We have wires. I wish I could show show that on, um, on my screen. But, um, you get a certain number, and depending upon the area in which you are and the environmental conditions, we have certain numbers. If you get a certain number, uh, we know you have gotten to the point where you have to spray. Now, I want to stress a certain point. Uh, there are a number of pests that they are pests that they are not considered of very high economic importance. And for those pests, uh, a, a number of times our threshold of tolerance for their numbers are high. So we are able to tolerate a high number before we say it's time to spray. Now, most of the time there, are, there is the tendency to say, we, well, I see one or two of the pests and even though I am far below the threshold uh, that is recommended for spraying, I'm going to go ahead and spray. Well, the problem with that is that some, it, it, it will end up not being cost effective because it's going to cost you a lot more uh, to deal with the pest than if you had allowed the pest to do the amount of damage it was capable of doing. So I, I, we, we need to really follow closely the uh, um the, the tolerance limits that have been set uh, for the various locations. And if you are at a location where you are not too sure about how, uh, what a threshold, uh, what, a, what an effective threshold to use, uh, you can let us know. We will contact um, the relevant uh, sources of those information and at least tell you what kind of threshold that you can use that will be close to what um, is recommended uh, for the kind of area in which you are. Um, I also would like to share a list of certain major pests that we typically uh, encounter uh, in tomato fields, which will help you in your visual identification of this pest in your field, uh, so that you, you, you can um, be able to do some basic assessment of what you have there in order to come to that decision point, you need the information to know the, a standard method for assessing the population in order to come to the point where, where you say, well, I've got into the number where I need to do something in terms of when I say something, then you have to do 
pesticides. But we all know most of the things we have to do for organic and just for the IPM um, um, uh, aspects of it is to prevent the problem as much as possible. Already planted, so selection of resistant varieties or tolerant varieties is not an option. We are already out there in the field, so there are other preventive measures, including just trying to make sure that the plants are healthy. The healthier they are, the more likely they are to defend themselves against all these pest pressures. So they will be able to produce what they are supposed to produce in spite of the activity of the pest, which further increases your tolerance of uh, when you have to spray with something. And once that happens, your profit margin is going to go up because you are not spending such a high amount on, on, on pesticides uh, to, to start with. So basically, uh, what I'd like to do, uh, and I'm sure when we are done with this, I'll try to uh, fix my internet issues, log into my account, and share some uh, pictures uh, that shows um, the recommended methods of managing some of the major pests of tomatoes, and also um, 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 how to identify them um, uh, to start with. Any questions so far? I cannot hear. Uh, okay. So, do you have experience with? Do you have experience with tomato pinworm? Pinworm, I have not worked directly with pinworm, but I, I know what it is. And uh, if you're looking for information, I've not done personal research on pinworm, yes, but I know what pinworms are and what, what they do to the crop and their management. Uh, are you having problems with pinworm? Yes, we've had it uh, build up in a greenhouse over a number of years, and uh, uh, tea, it seems to be helping. Uh, does that make sense to you? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, how are you using the BT? Say again. How are you uh, spraying the BT in the in the greenhouse? I want to know uh, how are you applying it. A backpack sprayer. Okay. So, what crops do you have in the uh, in the green? Uh, what kind of greenhouse are we talking about? Is it? Are you just growing uh, tomatoes, raising tomatoes in the greenhouse, or there is something else in the greenhouse? Uh, well, the problem started when it was uh, tomatoes alone. Okay. So there were only tomatoes there, there and then you sprayed them. And then, so uh, have you tried uh, getting everything out of the greenhouse for a while? Uh, well, well, I, I, I want us to be careful. We are not just looking at the pesticide application. Uh, have you tried um, regular, like you, you take every, when, you are done with growing plants in the greenhouse. Uh, what happens in the greenhouse? Do you do something else in the greenhouse? It's, uh, it has no plants from um, 1st of December to the middle of January, six weeks. Okay. Okay. So can you send me your email address? I would ask you some additional questions and I would like, uh, I'd like to be able to picture what I'm dealing with. I'll, if you don't mind, I would like to just a, a snapshot to, to see what your greenhouse setup is. And uh, I, we will be able to come up with some recommendations to, to treat that greenhouse uh, 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 so that you don't have the problem recurring. Will that work for you? Sure, that's fine. Yeah, so uh, I'm having internet issues, so what I'll do is that I'll give you my cell phone number, then I, if you don't mind, you test me uh, your contact information for me to follow up with you. So my cell phone number, uh, are you ready? Yes. 334-421-2242. I need to see what your greenhouse looks like, and then I'll ask you a few other questions. Uh, yes, uh, pinworms. Uh, yeah, I'll ask you a few other questions, and we'll be able to see how, how we can uh, go about it. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, I just wanted to say Anitha is now on too, so welcome Anitha. And I muted your microphone just because it was creating an echo, but I just wanted to let you know that, <laughs> okay, if, if you, um, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that, let everyone know that she's here. And so feel free to jump in or send a chat message to everybody. And that way, if it's still having echo issues, um, yeah. you can let everyone everyone know what you want to say. So, yeah. okay. I, I am not online at all because uh, uh, my account is not accepting my password for whatever uh, reason. I don't know. <laughs> Terrible. Okay. Well, anyway, let's just continue. At least we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. I just have a quick addition to the pin mom that was uh, mentioned right now. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So whoever, I think one of the, the growers asking about the pinworm problem in tomato. Yeah. Okay. So coming to the dependence on is maintaining in the greenhouse. So the solanaceous crops, like in general, tomatoes, eggplants, anything in that family are highly prone for pinworms. So the key thing he has to keep in mind is when he's getting the transplants. So that's one primary source of infestation. Um, and the second one is maintaining sanitation in the greenhouse. That's really very, very, very critical because this pest, the moths are like so tiny, like we might have, like they're very small in size and all they do is just lay eggs and then the cycle keeps on continuously. So there are like several generations in a short period of time. So just need to make sure like, you know, we, we've maintained proper sanitation in the greenhouse. The transplants are free from the infestation. So these are the key things they need to, because once you have damage at the fruit stage, it's kind of really very, very difficult to control. So if, if the greenhouse is already being like continuously grown for these kind of crops, they just have to keep in mind, like, you know, they maintain complete sanitation, like taking out the debris and cleaning out all the dry material and all these things, because since the overlap generations are very high, uh, so the they cycle continuously keeps on going, but we can still provide more information on the management provided. We just want to ensure like whatever the problem he's talking is correct. So he can send some pictures as clear as possible. Maybe if he's there right now, if it is at the fruiting stage, if he's seeing damage in the fruit or like, so a couple of these things will help us to reconfirm and revalidate into the management practices. Yeah, that's what I all I wanted to add for the the tomato pin ball. Uh, do you do you believe that uh, a BT it's Lepidoptera? Yeah, sometimes you know BT. It depends on how um, correctly we are following the. Uh, you never know because you know it, there might be a resistance issue when I mean, it's too soon to conclude but uh it's it's we, we cannot like ambiguously say like a yes or a no uh but if we if you send a picture and we can really see like what the problem is exactly so it's kind of too soon to come to your conclusion to say yes or a no thank you Okay, Franklin, are you still there? Hello? Let's see. Franklin, are you still on? We can't hear you if, if you are. Hello? Can anyone hear? <laughs> Uh, I, I hear you. Okay, you hear me. But Are, can we hear Franklin? No, we cannot hear him. No. I don't know. Okay, I don't know if he's still connected or what. Okay, well, do you want to continue, Anitha, a little bit? Because I don't know what happened to him. I'll try to get in touch with him because I can't hear him. Yeah, sure. Like, if there's anything I can, yeah, I can. 
until he comes back again. Yeah. Okay. So do you want me to like continue on tomato? Like Yeah, you want that'd to... be great. You know, in case anybody has any problems or questions um, and uh, yeah, see if Franklin, are you, are you back? Don't know. I don't think he is. So like, yeah, I guess if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I can share a little, uh, uh, a little PowerPoint images of. Okay. okay, you want to share a PowerPoint? I can make you the presenter here. It's not a PowerPoint. Oh, it's no. like okay. a Word document where okay. we have some images on important. Okay, topics. let me make you the presenter. I'll make you the presenter here, so you'll be able to share your screen. Okay, so if you click the button on that control panel that allows you, oh, there we go, great. Okay, so we see it, wonderful, there it is. Yeah, so so this is just a visual sampling, like in currently in the field, um, so especially with the tomato, that's some of, I'm not saying like, these are some of the major phase like we see um, starting from the vegetative phase to the fruiting stage and then until we harvest. But predominantly, like you don't have the best picture, especially until the flowering, especially in tomato. So as you can see from the image, the first one, the tomato hornworm. So this is how it really looks in the, the field. But the key thing to identify a tomato hornworm uh, in the field, even before you see like big caterpillar like this, is like a, a small size white transparent egg which is singly laid on the leaf. Like you can see on the top canopy of the tomato plants, just at, this, at the onset of flowering, um, just before flowering, at the flowering, and from there you can see continuously. So you can see like a, um, I would say like a small uh, uh, ball, like a, a two times of a pinhead size. Um, so that's how like you can very clearly see like a singly laid nice tiny ball of egg that is laid singly on leaf here. So you could visually see that. So when you see like even though we are working on thresholds, we are counting on thresholds. Once you see one egg on a plant, in a plant stand of about on an average of 10 plants, it means so in the rest of the rows you already have the eggs are already laid in the plant. So maybe you can visually see only one egg, but if you see that one egg, it's evident that it's already your field is, there, there is a very strong chance of tomato hornworm. So this is one key thing that causes major damage to the tomato crop, especially at the vegetative stage, because the extent you choose, it just leaves the shoot out like that. You just see like all the leaves are gone and shoots with nothing on the plant. So this is one important uh, pest in tomato, and this continues until like a good size, like a fruiting stage. So if you cannot manage this, most of your vegetative growth is gone, and then obviously it reflects on the, the fruit setting yield of the plant. So they don't have the leaves for them to ma ma to do the photosynthesis. So this this needs to be paid very very good attention when we are visually looking into that so next coming to the cabbage looper this one we didn't see much in our fields but it depends on the temperature the humidity and the varietal characters like which one you are growing so this will be one key thing you can identify in a field like you see this loop which we call as a cabbage looper but it's even a tiny caterpillar you can see a loop like this like a u-shaped loop so even if you see a smaller caterpillar with this i think you just have to make sure like you know there's already egg mass in there the eggs are already laid and there is highly chance of infestation and damaging of the crop so and the next one is fruit borer so as you can see in the picture here like there are there are they are cryptic, the fruit border, like we can say Helicoverpa, Heli 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 Heliothesia, like the, in general we call as a fruit border, where you can see at the fruiting stage, but these are the different colors you can see the caterpillars, uh, which means there is a infestation in your field. And the critical way you can visualize a plant is you can see the feeding damage, like the tissue is scraped off the leaves 
and you can see the chewing damage on the leaves. So which means there is already uh, the egg mass that is already being deposited and the caterpillars are coming out and they are ready to feed on the plant. And in a, in a period of 30 days, they are going to attack the fruiting stage too. So these are things that you, like you, they can see like very, very small. I don't know if you know about the seeds. So the eggs are going to be that tiny, uh, which is very hard to see in the field. But you can definitely see from the visual foliage damage that there is a, a, a leaf eating caterpillar. So whereas in tomato hornworm, you clearly see the leaves are chewed out and just the stems are left out. So that's the demarcation for this. So in the tomato hornworm, you have all the leaves, shoots, chewed up. Whereas in the fruit borers and the cabbage loopers, you just see a scraping and damage on the leaves. So I'll, I'll come later into the, the management practices. And stink bug is one thing. So there are like different stink bugs, brown stink bug, green stink bug. It again, like, you know, um, you have to keep in mind, like, this is the nymph we usually see. And we don't pay much attention because we think like it's something like a ladybird beetle, something like that. But no, um, they kind of match when we are looking visually in the field. Um, so either brown or green, you see like a stink bug for an average of 10 plants, um, like um, the threshold. Uh, I just I just want to read out the yeah the thresholds. I'll, I'll come into the thresholds. So this is one key way you can identify what they do is they kind of sting the fruits. The maximum damage they do is at the fruiting stage. So once they sting into the fruit, the fruit is un, it's not fit for any marketing or it's not fit for consumption because obviously it's going to create the bacteria and all that, and the fruit is not fit for marketing. So the next one I would like to, these these are continuously you see these pests like a leaf footed bug. Um, hold on a second, if you wouldn't mind me interrupting for one second. The audio is skipping a little bit, um, so I'm just I just wanted to see. Um, do you have a headset or anything like that? Are you using one or are you just speaking into the computer? No, I don't have one right now with me. Okay, yeah, maybe just um, I guess tr tr I just want to see if Franklin's back too. Are you here, Frank? I, I, yes. Ah, you are. I, I went, okay. Went out, uh, uh, I had a, a quick question for the farmer, if uh, not okay. not to uh, interrupt uh, yeah, Anita, sorry. but mm -hmm. I, I, I went. Uh, my 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 system went out at the time he was asking about BT uh, for for the for the pin one. Now one of the questions I wanted to ask is that you know with, with the BT we have different variants. Uh, which, which one have you been trying to use? Have you been trying the Ketaski? He's still there. Um, okay. Uh, did my? Do you hear me? Okay. I'm not sure if he's still on. Or... Yeah, because his question was whether BT would work. It would work. But uh, uh, for some of these different worms, they have specific um, uh, variants of the BT that do the best work for some of the worms, you know. And uh, the most recommended so far, I have to find out, uh, is the Ketas. Um, and um, sometimes, too, well, if he's not on, on, on the phone, then maybe I, when I do get back in touch with him, I'll find out some of um, the information, additional information. But uh, yeah, sorry for interrupting okay, you, Anita. Yeah, me too. I just wanted to um, let you know the audio is skipping a little because it's a little hard to understand sometimes. But maybe if you sleep, speak kind of slowly or <laughs> everybody will be, be uh, able to hear. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm done, Anita. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll try to be close to the system and see if that okay. will help a little better. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. So yeah, I just need to move myself close to the system. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I have a question here. Like, what do you use to prevent stink bug, leaf footed bug? Is there an actual predator like a wasp? Yes. Like, I mean. Um, I'm just trying to address the question here from alchemy farms and plants. Um, yes, like usually what we are seeing in the field, like you see an egg mass, 
that is laid by um, like you, you, it's it's kind of hard to differentiate. But when you usually in the organic system of farming, when you are not spraying too many uh, insecticides or pesticides, there is a natural predator that's working in the field, and we are like seeing on our farm plots where we see so many natural predators. But again, um, the key thing we have to keep in mind here is like, are we above or below the threshold? That's what is important. So it's it's just kind of a a, um, a a a quick decision that we take based on the threshold. Of course, the predators also like wasps, and then uh, they, they help us to uh, to control to some extent, but, um, especially with the tomato uh, and squash. I think we just need to uh, be careful about. Uh, making in ensure that we follow the thresholds and then do the spraying before the damage is too much uh, because in two days time period if the eggs are a lot or a leaf put a bug you know uh, the 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 nymphs are going to come out and they start damaging the plants so uh, we just have to be cautious about um, the predators as well as the spraying too so yeah as you can see to the the leaf foot um, yeah, these are some of the beetles, like the Colorado potato beetle, where you see it's kind of hard to look into in a field scenario. Like, but you can these bugs you can very clearly identify. Like this leaf footed bug, you see the legs like this, and you see uh, like one per plant, like one in a average of ten plants. I think we just have to uh, pay attention that. You to, we need to go ahead and spray, but again, you have to ensure you visually scout the entire field. And if you see like only one row or it's only like two rows, we can just go based on spot treatment. You don't have to spray the entire field. We can just spot treatment where you see more more number of the sting bugs uh, uh, or other beetles. So some of the other things uh, uh, we, we've been noticing, not a lot, but some of the flea beetles. Uh, and this is how they really look on a tomato plant. Uh, very, very tiny, black, round. And by the time you look in a slip of a second, they're gone. But if you have a quick visual, visual uh, sampling on the plants, like which this also causes, uh, the damage to the foliage. And the next one, as you can see, rips. Um, it again depends on the varieties, depends on the, the surrounding canopy, and how, how well if you have more weeds, and if you have other crops in your surrounding areas. This is one key thing where you see the thrips damage on top of the and the best to, to monitor the sucking pests, especially like thrips white flies and aphids is to set up yellow sticky cards in, in, in the plants so that that will help us to monitor like how many thrips or like white flies or aphids um, because these are tiny things they get attracted and they, you can when you see your trap that kind of gives you an estimation the, the threshold like do you really need to spray for these sucking pest complex like thrips, white flies, and aphids. So for the thrips, you can see a shriveling of the plants. The leaves are puckered. The leaves are like folded. And you see like, um, you can very clearly demarcate from the rest of the plants. See like you have to figure out like, are you seeing any thrips? Or sometimes it might be also water stress because the wilting sometimes also kind of masks. So we just have to ensure whether it's the thrips damage or or the the so as you can see here for thrips you can see like an upward curling whereas for the white flies you can see like a downward curling so thrips you always see like ants tons of ants so which means the aphids are secreting the honeydew and the ants come there to eat that honeydew so so this is like one clear visual identification we can see if we have aphids on our plants 
Um, and the next one is leaf hoppers. It again depends on your weed canopy, your plants, how well you are maintaining. If you have a lot of weeds, we are allowing a lot of other other insects like grasshoppers, crickets. Hoppers. So these are some common things. And then um, again, like I said, like these long leg plants. So some of these are like key pests we've been noticing. Um, and uh, if you have, I would say like if you have at least three of these pests I have shown here, uh, I think it's it's a it's alarming that we have to make sure you know we are doing um, this. We are looking into the thresholds. We are we are scouting time to time, um, and then we make sure we maintain the weed weeding because the more weeds, like you are kind of uh, uh, facilitating for more insects like others like the grasshoppers and crickets they kind of chew out the plants so 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 these are some things we just have to keep in mind um, but if we can manage some of these i think we can be good um, to go until the fruiting stage and harvesting stage so mm. we are we are good to some extent if we were identified the early before the pest goes like into um, Crossing the threshold, um, I think uh, uh, we can we can to some extent uh, manage uh, the, the crop. Yeah, so that's that's what I just wanted to show some key things on the best, um, and maybe probably Dr. Franklin can add some. Uh, like so far, we just saw some blossom rot in terms of diseases, um, and maybe Dr. Franklin can add some to uh, the diseases part. Or yeah. And, and maybe yeah, he can he can add to what so. Thank you. Let's see, we couldn't hear whoever just said something. Yeah, I had I had I don't know whether that was a question, but I had I had somebody a, a second ago. Oh, okay. So. All right. So we hear you now. <laughs> okay. All right. Does anyone have any other questions or um, anything else? Okay. Well, should we end the meeting, or do you, Franklin? Do you have anything else you'd like to say? Or oh, uh, except. Uh, oh, well, I think I hear somebody else. Okay. I heard somebody else. Okay. Uh, I just want to emphasize a couple of the things that um, um, Dr. Chituri said about uh, managing the uh, worms in the greenhouse environment. Like uh, she said, sanitation practices is going to be um, key in terms of, and that was partly why I was asking the question, what happens? after the plants are no longer in there and how are they managed and stuff like that. So uh, some of these problems, you go the pesticide route and because of other management practices, uh, the pesticide may not do its best work. Or you may be using a pesticide that is recommended against the pest. In the case of the Bt, for example, you may be using Bt but the type of uh, bacillus that you are using, the, 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 the species or the, the variety or the version of it that you're using may not be what is recommended against the pest. So we have the bacillus thuringiensis, we have different types um, of, of, of that, of variants of, 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 of that bacillus. So sometimes we have to be really careful Oh, I'm using BT, but you have to sometimes try to find out which of the BT products uh, or, or the versions of the bacillus that does the best work against um, the, the particular um, insect you are dealing with. And so that, that is all. I'm, it's going to be management. It's going to be using the right product, um, sanitation practices and stuff like that. Yes. Any other question? Um, I don't think we have too many more people on right now, so I don't 
think we have any other questions. We have two, well, let's see, we just have one more. Tom is still here. Um, he's not connected to his audio, but um, okay. Doesn't look like we have any more questions, so maybe we should end. Thank you. Okay, well, thank Feel you. Very sorry about it. <laughs> Oh, the delay at the beginning. Yeah, well, I think um, for next time. We'll not, only the, not only the delay, but my inability to sign in uh, all the, the uh, slides um, are anything. So. <laughs> I'm sure you'll yeah. have hundreds of emails when you get back. <laughs> yeah, just want to, yeah, I apologize. I was struck in the field for something else and I was come by 11. Oh, and well. then I'm Franklin called. I didn't realize we were already done English. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Okay, well, luckily we were able to do it. So, okay, so um, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.